All right, everybody. Welcome to a very exciting update video for Darkest Dungeon 2. If you guys didn't see the Triple I initiative, uh, like game play, game showcase and stuff on the you know, earlier today, you should go check it out because there's a lot of really cool things like Slay the Spire 2. That's awesome. I'm going to be getting in on that. But there was some huge news for Darkest Dungeon 2, something that I didn't think I knew that a DLC was coming based off of what Chris and Tyler talked about. Um, but I did not think that they would announce it here. I thought that we would be getting a different announcement. So this is crazy. If you haven't seen this, this is the Darkest Dungeon Kingdoms announcement trailer. And there is a lot to unpack here. So I am going I've already watched it a few times, but we're going to watch it. And I'm just going to kind of go through my thoughts as it plays. Um, if you want to watch the whole thing, go check out Red Hook's channel. It's there. It's on the Discord. It's it's all over the place. But we're going to analyze this, the crap out of this, because there's a lot to absorb here. Of course, this may not be the final look of everything. This is very early on, I am imagining. Um, but this is apparently coming to us later this year. Um, so let's get into it. Um, God, this is so exciting. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna play and I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna be pausing and unpausing quite frequently. Um, so this, I mean, it's only a minute and 18 seconds long. There's not like that much to delve into, but the there's a lot victory here. Casts a long shadow. So already this is telling me that this is definitely like takes place after the mountain. This is like the end cut scene, right? Of the first game. Um, where the light is coming through the mountain. So I'm I'm guessing this is kind of like after. I don't know if that means that if this is something you have to like beat the main game in order to unlock this game mode. Um, you know, obviously unsure there. All right, already immediately look at this. Like if we we go back, um, we've got like this tile kind of gameplay looking thing here. Uh, we've got looks like inns. We've got campfires. And then we've got regions. So it looks like you've got a sprawl here. We've got a, a tangle here. Uh, there's a fetter here, another inn, an inn, a campfire. I don't know what these campfires are, right? This is something we haven't seen. Um, so that's exciting. Obviously, this is all something we haven't seen. And in that night. Um, and then here we can see, th like, there's a lot to take in with this screen here. So it looks like we've got um, the, the stagecoach is down here at the bottom. So this looks like where you are at, the player. But if you look around here, we've got, it looks like a shroud, a tangle. It looks like some sort of quest. It looks like there's a mountain region. Um, we can see there's like a jester over here. There's a highwayman over here. We have a roster of heroes at the top, right? It says Darkest Kingdom over here. I don't know what that is. Um, we also have a day counter over here. So these campaigns seem to like run... A period of days um i don't know what these symbols but basically i'm thinking that like you have your team is at like an inn you have like a roster of heroes available to you maybe you can send heroes to different inns to like collect resources for you over time maybe it's like kind of like a turn-based thing like over the span of a day um maybe you recruit them i don't know we've also got bounty hunter up here which is interesting a lot of people speculating that bounty hunter in this game mode may be a um uh you know like a regular hero that you can hire uh so that that could be interesting i'm also noticing this uh this obvious like enemy marker here so this i'm guessing is like these are quests um that do different things maybe you get different rewards for these different quests i, I don't know if these are maracas or spoons um i'm unsure what that is uh but we've got like this timer here maybe that like you have three days to defend this in um, it kind of sounds like you're going to have to defend locations like you can kind of go out to areas, but like these inns are like your hubs, I'm guessing. Gloom. So, yeah, you can see here, like you can go this way, it looks like. So you maybe you to get to this inn, you have to go through a shroud, right? You can't just like fast travel. So maybe that's kind of how this works. Like if you want to go to do different things. Like you have to do a region. I don't know what the length of that might be, but your fragile triumph is under. Look scene. around the map. Go to the fetter. So then, so like it looks like we went to this inn, right? Like that was the selection here. And then as you can see, hey, this is an inn in the background. It's an inn in the fetter, right? We can see the background of the fetter. This is an inn here, and there's a fight. 
So like maybe you have to go defend that in. Do you did we just instant travel there? I don't know. Like maybe we did, maybe we they didn't. Must be um, this all looks normal like combat. I will say that the um finishing blow, nothing crazy there. Hold the line. Hold the line didn't give any tokens, right? So that's a the the perspective looks a little further out, right? There, I feel like there's more gap here and here than there is normally. Um, I also like looking at the UI. Obviously, I can't see him much, but I don't see like I don't see loathing. I don't see a battle modifier of any kind. Um, so interesting stuff there. Uh, this I mean, this is a big one, right? Like this we've got in upgrades here. So it looks like we've got a different uh, you can't really see it because of the, the bar. But in the bottom left there, you can see there's a different uh, like symbol that we haven't seen before. Uh, and so there's also one next to it that I don't recognize. I'm guessing that's provisions. It looks like a guy with a basket, right? Um, but here we've got the physician um, up here on the top left. It looks like this might be mastery. That's the same symbol as down there. We've got the stagecoach. I'm guessing this is provisions. It's either a man or a bottle next to bread. Um, and then we've got this physician and then this defense token. I'm going to guess that you can like give your inns like maybe you own an inn and you can like upgrade its defenses. Um, but we've got an upgrade tree, which is crazy. This is a really interesting thing that this I don't know if this upgrades abilities. I mean, if we're looking here like something to do with disease, with healing, with items, combat items with stress healing, disease percent down. Like, are these like meta upgrades that like progress through like a single campaign um, that you can unlock? Uh, and be like, hey, you can lower you can lower disease chance throughout the entirety of the remaining run. Um, over here, this all looks the same. So there's nothing in the inventory here that looks different. It still looks like you know combat items and food. I don't know if this works. And there seems to be like a a major upgrade here at the top, right? Um, something that you strive to unlock over time. I just whatever that. We've so got more here. Again, looks like quirks. Quirk percentage, I would assume this is maybe like lowering the chance to get a, a negative quirk. Um, you know, maybe this increases the he the health of your heroes each time. Like this is like total health. This is maybe how much healing they receive. I don't know, you know, and then like Green something force. to do with stress. So yeah, upgrades. Okay, so here's, okay, so this is actually an unlock tree. Okay, it's not just the provisioner, it's an unlock tree. So you can see here like, uh, can we just go down just a sec? Oh, no, I had it. Oh, God, I had it. There it is. Um, percent down for like maybe your wheel getting destroyed. I don't know. This one looks like a trinket. Like, why would you want that to be lowered? I don't know. But these look like I mean, I'm assuming these are very early on, you know, kind of just quick. Yeah, these all look very similar. I think they would probably get changed again. We have kind of this penultimate or ultimate unlock at the top here so this is interesting to see so something to do with like uh you've got wheels we've got armor we've got like books or trinkets or like i i, I see books and i see herbs so i'm thinking like combat items or trinkets or something i don't know this is what i think of when i think of trinkets i don't know what the percentage down would be maybe lowering the percentage like lower chance to get low quality trinkets who knows Okay, this one, it looks like the ma uh, the mastery. Oh, we should see, actually, provisions. Okay, so that's called provisions. And then this is called the mastery trainer. So this looks interesting here. I don't know what this is. I mean, these are blanked out, right? But this looks like an ability, like, you know, how the abilities look like on your um, upgrade bar. So maybe abilities have multiple tiers of levels now. Right, like the or maybe this unlocks how many ability slots you can have. So maybe like this instead of doing like shrines, right? I'm gonna guess that like your heroes aren't gonna start off fully upgraded. They're gonna have to be upgraded over time through the course of these campaigns. I'm guessing this is gonna be more similar to Darkest Dungeon One, where there's like an overarching campaign. This is more the management side of things, and I like this. This isn't as much. It doesn't look like it's as I don't know. I th this looks a bit more fun to me than how it was in Darkest Dungeon 1, but it is very linear. Like, it looks like it's just like you just upgrade this, then this, then this. Like, I I this isn't really a tree in the normal sense of it. 
So I'm hoping that this is kind of placeholder because it just looks like right now it's like, hey, I upgrade this and then I just upgrade that and then I just upgrade that and then I just upgrade that. But my guess here for Mastery Trainer is this is going to be roster size, this is going to be damage, and this is going to be something to do with the number of abilities you have access to or the level of the ability. I would assume it's how many abilities you have access to. Um, okay, okay, I don't know what this... Memories, maybe? Um, I don't know what that would represent. Again, I think these are placeholders. I doubt that it's this simplistic in the final form, but... Um, okay. This realm... So yeah, Must stand so you see this, like, it's changing, like, this is, this is the roguelike, this is becoming much more roguelike in this, like, sense, where I don't know how long these campaigns might run you in total, right, but maybe they just keep growing, or maybe you go to different ones, like, how big it does it get, how long does it, I mean, this looks pretty large, right? Like, I'm guessing maybe you, like, keep traveling, you just keep going around, and you keep finding things, and, like, I don't know. It, it seems we'll see. I like this. Like this one's like surrounded by forest. Um, I mean, it kind of like logically doesn't make any sense, right? Like there's an ocean here and then, a, you know, the whatever. But, but yeah, it does. It looks like it gets pretty big. And bleed. Yeah. Oh, very. Ah, uh, here we go. OK, so we've got the hateful Viagro. This one that we've never seen before. Uh, well, we'll see in a sec. And boom. <laughs> The Bloodsuckers. So we have three new enemy factions. I can't remember what they called them all. They, there isn't a, a description in that they've actually released for this already. So let me read that description. It says, Introducing Kingdoms, a free standalone campaign mode. By the way, free. Free. Campaign game mode coming to Darkest Dungeon 2 later this year. Protect and nurture your kingdom. I'll bring this over here so you guys can see it. Protect and nurture your kingdom by defending safe havens and purging dangerous environments of insidious threats so you have to, i'm guessing like we saw there's like a defense thing where like your inn will get attacked or a safe area area will get attacked right and you have to defend it but then you can also go out and purge areas of things and i assume you get items for that like quest items like deliverables or something like that you can upgrade inns to bolster defenses i'm going to say that that's probably that last tab that one that had the shield on it so you can make it so that like an inn can like last longer without needing intervention or that um, maybe when you get there, like enemies are weaker or something. You can embark on unique quest lines. So we saw it says quest lines, which I'm pretty interested about. I don't know if that means like you just go and it's a quest. Like, is it like multiple things? In which case, like I really like the idea of kind of overarching quests um, that you have to kind of play into. Right. Like that could be really interesting. And you have to fight back against three new factions, the Coven or the Coven, Beastmen and Crimson Courtiers. So this is those are those three. We've got the uh, the Coven, which is like, you know, witchcraft and stuff. This is obviously from the these are all. Well, I shouldn't say these two are both factions from the first game. This one, the Beastmen, um, is not a faction from the first game, but this is the Abominations like sigil just upside down so this is def these guys are definitely connected to or have the same curse that the abomination has does that mean the abomination is coming to the game i don't know i'm doubtful um but i also had no like this is beyond any expectations i had for what this dlc could possibly be bloodsuckers being back in the game also super interesting um i'm hoping that if the crimson curse makes its way back into the game which i imagine it would you can't bring the bloodsuckers back into the game and not have the crimson curse be there um that they are that it's different that it's not the exact same it's not as intrusive right um but like i also see all of these three having infections of some kind right you've got the fungal infection from the coven we've got the blood from you know the crimson curse from these guys and then we've got obviously the beast man transformation here i'm curious to see if maybe all three of these will give like unique diseases or like debuffs or like combination debuff buffs right like it gives you something powerful kind of like the crimson curse did but it comes at like a cost of like maintenance and like you can get like random actions or it does damage or it blights you but also you get like 10 percent additional strength or something like could there possibly be something where all three of these like factions can infect you I also don't know how extensive these factions are going to be, right? Are they going to be like a full bread faction or are they going to be kind of mini factions? Um, I mean, this is a lot of work to expect from them to do in a year. Like, I don't think they've been working on this like dedicated that long. 
but I may be wrong on that. I mean, this this already just from this has like I think answers a lot of things that people have been wanting from Darkest Dungeon 2 that have not been in the game. Like I love DD2 as is, right? But the biggest issue is replayability, in my opinion. This looks like this game mode will be the thing that keeps the game alive, like, years down the road. Like, the campaign is fun, like, the main campaign, but this feels more like the real game, almost. It almost feels like Darkest Dungeon 2 as is was kind of like a preemptive for this. Um, I don't know. I, we'll have to see what it looks like. Let's see what more there is here. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else there. And so then we get this... Uh, Thing here uh, this is the new logo We've got like the chess logo the knight the skull looks like the mountain maybe the kingdom uh These kingdoms the new game mode and it is a free update which is huge by the way this being free is incredible hopefully this gets a lot more people to buy the game that we're kind of on the fence about it and this does well for red hook i can only hope i mean they wouldn't be doing this if they didn't have the money to do it right but like God, this is this is incredible. This is beyond any expectations I had about like what the DLC could look like. Um, there's as far as we can tell, there's no new regions, right, that I can see. Um, looking here, we've got some like empty quest objective lines, like maybe. Hmm, there's like nothing in there, which is interesting. I wonder what that means. Um, I'm also curious, like how the roster works, because obviously this isn't every hero, right? So like, do you recruit heroes through the process? Do you like like i said do you upgrade how many slots you have available and then maybe you have to go do a quest to get a hero to join your roster and then you can like send heroes out can is there going to be like turn-based strategy like civ style things where you like send like people to um a tile and go have them do something for you while you like go out and fight elsewhere like what does that look like if that looks you know if that is anything um and these are now full, right? So, like, I'm curious as to, like, it looked like in the thing they, like, clicked here and it, like, went straight to this inn. So, like, do you not have to go to the fetter? Do, like, is that just based, like, I don't know, like, what that means per se. Again, I'm curious about the mountain here. Like, what does that look like? Is that just, like, cultists? Is that maybe just the cultist region now? Um, or is that, like, going to get its own full... Thing. And and how do these regions work? Do you just go in and do one quest and then like one fight and then leave, or is it multiple fights in a in a round? Is there going to be different variants of that? Then very curious about like the the duelist, the duelist, <laughs> uh, the highwayman and the jester being here. Very curious about the campsites. I think these are definitely very placeholdery looking things, but they could be this the part the the, the the final product for sure. Um, but you can see here it kind of highlights like going through here. Um, looking around the map again, and then they select this one right with the fetter. And you can see up here there's more quest lines. Maybe you have to like go through here to like unlock more of the map, right? Because it doesn't look like it looks like there's more here, but it doesn't look like it's connected in the same way. Um, and then, yeah, you've got this like three. Is that three fights? Is that three days until the fight? This area is claimed. Like what happens if it gets claimed? You know, like what does that look like? And this fight, this fight looks normal. Again, there's nothing crazy here except for the backdrop of the inn burning. So like same heroes, like um, there doesn't seem to be like a, a selection process, at least that we can see. Like, do you select which heroes you want to take in? Do you just have a roster ready to go? Um, the fight again, this, this fight just looks normal. Nothing crazy there. Um, trying to see if I could see anything. I, I, they were pretty clear about like not showing the UI for the actual, like selecting abilities. It looks like they just give us the actual attack animation. And then the UI here, like doesn't have like the normal stuff. I don't see anything for the heroes. I don't see anything for the enemies. I don't see anything up here. So like, I don't know what that's all going to be like. But yeah, this this might be the most interesting part. I'm curious. I think this is defenses, a provisioner, um, like I said, mastery trainer. Are these different between each one? Like if I go here, no, it's just okay. So yeah, that's mastery trainer. Is that different than this one down here? You know, stuff like that. So I'm I'm really curious about this. 
but very exciting. I, I would love to know what your thoughts are on this. Is this something you're excited for? Do you think this is maybe like not the right direction? Do you think it is the right direction? Um, the only thing I will say that I'm a little upset about and I'm a little curious now is I, I don't know what this means for console release and I don't know what this means for mod support, right? I I thought that those were going to be the things that they announced today. So I'm unsure if this means that they will release those supports for the base game as is and then maybe have to do this process again for consoles and for um for mod support like when they release this update like does it have to go through its own wave or are they going to hold off on console and mod release until after this comes out um which may make more sense but like that's still pushing things out really far uh and i think people really want to get their hands on the game as far as console players go and stuff and and modding is also very important i mean this is going to be a huge undertaking like is this going to be something that can even be modded realistically like i'm sure it can um, this might open a whole new avenue for modders, like to like have this kind of tile based combat, you know, like management system from the top, like very interesting stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's pretty much my thoughts on it. I'm really excited for this. I think this is a really good direction. I think this does offer as long as they do this right, it will offer that level of replayability where you can probably pick it up and play for like 30, 40 minutes and feel like you're still progressing um and an overarching campaign this is very dd1-esque um i like that it's not just the hamlet though because i don't like the hamlet that much in dd1 um this feels kind of more roguelikey and stuff it feels random generation you know but we don't know what that looks like so we'll have to see what that means in the coming months but um definitely not what i expected again leave your thoughts and comments down below i really would love to talk to you all about this and um thanks for watching the video i will catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye.